Why wait for a review embargo to lift when you can just find somebody who benchmarked the thing already and posted it on Billy Billy? Well, for one thing, waiting would, you know, get you more reviews. For another thing, waiting might get you something that's not in Chinese, because I don't speak Chinese. Maybe you do, and you can help us out in the comments section. But the good news here is um, <laughs> I can run you guys through a benchmark for the 3080 Ti. How it's, and it's, they specifically have it stacked up against a 3090 and a 3080. So we'll see exactly where it falls in between a 3080 and a 3090. Does it actually match the 3090? How bad, how much does it beat the 3080? We'll look at those. This has both synthetic 3D Mark benchmarks as well as multiple gaming benchmarks. This is cool. However, for those of you who aren't in the loop, uh, let's get back to the absolute basics, which is as expected, we just had the 3080 Ti officially announced, although I've been reporting on leaks on this thing forever. Um, it did come in at 12 gigabytes, like expected. So that is more, more than the 3080, but it is much, much less than a 3090, but a 3090 doesn't need the amount of VRAM that it has for gaming applications. 12 gigabytes should be fine. Now, the price. This is awful. This is not unexpected. This is what I expected, but this is awful. So, as I think I mentioned in some other videos, I was expecting it to come in much closer in price to the 3090 than it would come in to the 3080. Some people were hoping it would come in at like 999, but given the way the current market is, Nvidia knows they can basically charge whatever they want. So, they just stuck it really close to a 3090 because they can. And the 3090 was already really expensive. I hate to see that this is where GPU prices are at the top end right now, but it is what it is. Nvidia knows they can charge this. I wish they didn't, but they know they can charge this. Here's what I really don't wanna see. I'm hoping that we don't see like a reduction in 3080s to shift over to 3080 Ti's because they know that they can make more money on the 3080 Ti's. Now I understand that it depends on the, you know, the quality of the chips that they're getting manufactured and whether, you know, it's fully functional and can, can um, you know, can operate as a 3080 Ti or not. But I'm just saying, um, I, I wish we weren't seeing this price tag on it, and I, and I hope we still see 3080s. Not that you could really uh, have an easy time getting anything at supply. I don't need to talk about supply and prices. You guys have been hearing about that for like half a year now. Anyway, so it is coming in with the specs that we expected. By the way, I'll link all of my sources, any article or video or anything I talk about today will be in my description as my subscribers are used to. Thank you, subscribers. You guys are beautiful people. You also, subscribers might notice that I sound maybe and look slightly different than normal. I'm not at home on my normal setup. This is with a laptop and a different camera and mic. So I was having some lip syncing issues. Hopefully this one goes okay because I don't have time to re-record. Anyway, we'll see what happens. All right. Um, so overall, you know, we've got the specs um, officially reported. They're lining up pretty much with what we expected, which is basically a very, very slightly cut down 3090. So it should be much closer to the 3090 in terms of performance than the 3080. Now we did get this performance chart uh, officially from NVIDIA. So, you know, it's from NVIDIA. This is not an independent source. I'll make myself disappear for a second if you wanna take a look. This is comparing it to a 1080 Ti, a 2080 Ti, and, a, and then the, we have the 3080 Ti. In a variety of games with rasterized performance separated from ray tracing performance, and then these are some rendering performance numbers. So, Really cool, uh, nice charts. I would expect them to be close to accurate, even though they're not coming from an independent source. But here's the thing. What a lot of people might be interested in is how it stacks up against a 3080 and a 3090 if you're deciding you know, which one of those you wanted to purchase, assuming you could actually find one. So that's why I like our leaked benchmarks um, to complement this. They'll complement this quite well. So let's jump over to that. Okay. Here's some like uh, Chinese charts. Let's just listen to some Chinese. No, I'm just kidding. We're not gonna watch the, the, the video here. So um, I was going through and screen capping these and trying to make sense out of what these said and what game it was and all of that. Some of them say things like, hey, Port Royal. I can tell it's Port Royal, but not all of them. So thank goodness the people over at Video Cards have taken care of some of this for us. Uh, they're also reporting on this Billy Billy leak. And um, they're explaining that, how, how was this guy able to do this? Well, supposedly, uh, he uh, just paid an exorbitant amount of money to get the card ahead of time, 
And that means that he's not locked to the embargo agreement because it wasn't given to him as a review sample. Somehow he got his hands on the, um, you know, uh, press released uh, driver for the thing. And here we go. They're reporting that the reason his GPU Z is, is reporting a 3080 and not uh, maybe not reporting the card correctly uh, or something like that is that he maybe didn't have an up-to-date GPU Z, whatever. Uh, apparently there was also some crypto mining tested here with it achieving 65 mega hashes per second, um, which is you know, limited from what it could do if it wasn't hash rate limited. So this is hash rate limited. And as we know so far, it, that hash rate limiting hasn't been broken, but it does only apply to certain cryptocurrencies. Anyway, jumping down to the performance numbers, which is I'm sure what you guys uh, would like to see. So here's the synthetics, and then let's jump over to uh, some actual gaming benchmarks. So here's 3D Mark, there's your 3090, 3080 Ti, and your 3080. Um, and then uh, here is, once again, 3090, 3080 Ti, 3080. Uh, I would love it if I could read exactly what some of that said, but the guys over here at Video Cards are uh, summarizing it for us and presumably could translate some of this better. And we're seeing that um, there's a stock and overclocked scenario. That might be what some of those, you know, secondary graphs here showing less than a 3% difference. It's saying that the percentages are in reference to the 3080 Ti at stock. So I believe what we're seeing here is the 3080 Ti at stock. That's probably saying stock. Here's it running an overclock. And then these are the percentages saying that the 3090 is plus 0.92% and plus 6.65%, where the 3080 is um, minus 10.55% and minus 5.26%. Again, those pluses and minuses are based on the 3080 Ti at stock, and then it has its own, you know, five, almost 5.6% 5 overclock, right? So that's what we're seeing. Stock 3080, I'm guessing this is an OC 3080. Stock 3090, OC seed. Uh, 3090. So notice that it's not even a 1% gain on the 3090 compared to the 3080 Ti at stock. Interesting. So we're seeing here that it's much closer to a 3090 than it is to a 3080, probably an imperceptible difference in terms of performance in a game com compared with the 3090. A more significant but still small jump compared to the 3080. This is exactly in line with what we expected. Uh, again, there's some more numbers. I think this is just from a different, um, a different 3D Mark synthetic benchmark, I believe. Okay, um, I need to learn some Chinese now. Here is 3D Mark Firestrike Extreme. So Firestrike Extreme. Here's screenshots from the video. Uh, all of these will be laid out the same way, so I'm going to explain it uh, well this first time around, and on the rest of the screens, we're going to go through a lot quicker. So if you look here, I believe this is our CPU, just saying that it's an AMD R95900X uh, CPU, and they were all running on that same platform. Uh, on the right-hand column, we have the 3090. On the middle column, we have our 3080 Ti with an overclock. And on the left column, we have our 3080. Notice I'm not seeing that listed as saying overclocked, and I'm not seeing the 39 listed as an overclock. This says OC, although it could be that he has an OC model, like, like a AIB partner card. So I will mention um, that as that, that seems unclear to me, um, at least based on my understanding of Chinese. Maybe you guys can correct me in the comments. Anyway, as far as the results we're seeing, we're seeing here that in this particular test on Firestrike, that uh, there was almost no gap between the 3090 and the 3080. And in this one, we're seeing the 38, sorry, 3080 Ti. And in this one, we're seeing the 3080 Ti actually slightly beat the 3090. And if we jump over to comparing it to the 3080, we see a more significant gap, although obviously they're still fairly close in performance. And that's pretty much the story. I've looked at these slides already. That's pretty much the story. Um, here's our other Firestrike page here. Uh, once again, seeing it basically almost tie, but not quite the 3090 and seeing it slightly beat um, the 3080. Again, it is closer to a 3090 than a 3080. I'm gonna say that a lot. Uh, here we have the Port Royal benchmarks. 
Once again, extremely close to a 3090, more significant lead over the 3080. Here is more Port Royal, extremely close to the 3090, more significant lead over the 3080. Hey, I'm gonna sound like a broken record. We have Time Spy Extreme here. So uh, Time Spy Extreme, once again, extremely close to 3090, more significant lead over the 3080. Extremely close to the 3090, more significant lead over the 3080. Do I, am I annoying you yet by sounding exactly the same? Guess what we're gonna see? We've got Red Dead Redemption 2, followed by Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Okay, Red Dead Redemption 2. We're seeing our, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure this, this one here will be our um, average FPS, right? Average FPS, <laughs> okay. Um, so here's our 3090 in terms of performance. Which one of these is average? Ah, where is he putting it? Is, is this it? Is this big number our average here? Well, all I can tell you is if we compare all the numbers, this looks fairly close. I'm seeing this one in the middle having the more significant gap. That's, is this a high, a low, and an average down at the bottom? I think that makes the most sense here. So I'm, I'm gonna interpret it that way. In which case we're seeing the average is extremely close to the 3090 and a much more significant lead over the 3080. Again, sorry I don't speak Chinese to be 100% certain which one is the average frames. Okay, that was the Red Dead Redemption 2. We've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And once again, um, I'm struggling to find exactly what number I'm comparing. Maybe, maybe it's this one. <laughs> if it is, we're basically tied here with the 3090, almost tied, tied, and then more significant lead over the 3080. So whichever number you're looking at, it does look fairly, uh, fairly like, you know, it's the same story in all the tests. Here's GTA 5. I'm gonna kind of stop repeating myself. Here's the numbers for GTA 5. It looks like the same story. This was PUBG. Looks like the same story. Um, now we've got Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Hey, this is more clearly an average FPS indicator, I believe. Um, there you go. Looks like the same story, almost tying or tying the 3090, more significant lead over the 3080. And our final one is Cyberpunk 2077. And again, whatever numbers we're looking at here, FPS average, average FPS? That can't be 224. Well guys, I'm gonna be 100% honest here that I'm having trouble telling where our like average frame rate exactly is here, but the numbers here seem fairly similar to the, you know, well, actually, I don't know, guys. There's your, wait, 56 FPS, there it is. 51 FPS, 53 FPS, 55 FPS. So we got 55, 56. Is that 50, I'm having trouble reading over the Billy Billy thing, 53, 48, and 51. Okay, that one was a little tricky to interpret here, guys. Okay, so apologies that I don't speak Chinese. I could pop myself back in, this, in the frame here again. So again, wish I could have given you a little more details on what all of that said, but the links to every, everything will be in the description. Um, hopefully this was useful information uh, to you guys. Now, uh, before I go, I'll just throw in some quick bits of other information since there was a bunch of other news here. Yeah, I said quick bits. I know I'm not tech linked. Uh, one thing is that we're getting some um, a bunch of NVIDIA RTX titles. So they're adding it to some big games, including Doom Eternal, Icarus, Red Dead Redemption 2. I, by the way, I, this will have DLSS 2.1, and I plan on testing that on the channel. So stay tuned and subscribe if you haven't, if you wanna see me testing out some DLSS 2.1 in some Red Dead Redemption. I just seen the release date on that as coming soon. So I don't know the exact date yet here, Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, more coming. Here's the article. If you want to see some details, I will link that in the description to this video. 
Also, in AMD news, um, they're partnering again on mobile chips to get RDNA 2 graphics with ray tracing and variable shading into Exynos chips, which are uh, a Samsung mobile chip that they put in some uh, high-end smartphones. And we've also been seeing rumors, I think it might be reported in this article, uh, that we might actually see some laptops. We've been seeing ARM-powered laptops as more of a thing lately. And um, so we could even see that those chips used in laptops as well, uh, um, since, you know, ARM, ARM laptops are a thing now. Speaking of bringing RDNA 2 graphics into things, it's looking like, as rumored, it is now true that Tesla will bringing it into their infotainment systems. Um, measuring in at 10 teraflops on the APU there, which I believe puts it close to a PS5. Am I wrong on that? I'm remembering the teraflops wrong? Well, anyway, I don't have a Tesla, so this doesn't affect me that much, but apparently Teslas will have AMD graphics, fairly strong graphics, in their infotainment systems. This article has a few more details. It will be linked in the description, including that it will be a, uh, the display is 17 inches with a 2200 by 1300 uh, resolution, secondary screen in, the, screen in the back that can equip with a wireless controller. And um, yeah, they're, they're reporting here that does put it on par with consoles like the PS5. I mean, cool. Um, Anyway, I think they're reporting here on what type of GPU die we might expect on all that. Anyway, don't want to get bogged down in the details here. Also, we saw TMC sharing info about their three nanometer power and performance gains and details for potential two, meter, two nanometer designs. So they're just sharing the future of the semiconductor processes over there. I'll link this article in the description if you're interested in diving into that because this video is starting to run a little bit long. Hey guys, you're awesome. I hope you have an excellent day. And, you know, yeah, that's pretty much it. You guys are awesome. Oh, I do read all the comments, so feel free to comment. I read all of them and reply to as many as I can. Have an excellent day.